Hello YouTube, it's William. I uh, stepped out into the woods here just to play around a little bit. Found a piece of, uh, I think it's sweet gum. But uh, I'm going to try to carve a ladle. But anyway, as so it's coming down my trail where I usually pull my canoe, this is what I saw. See that? That is probably a little spike. And that is probably legal for me to kill. Looks pretty fresh too. As in this year. I don't know, maybe a few weeks old. All the sap is dried so it wasn't anything recent. Alright. Got this uh, little small pine tree. I'm gonna try to rough shape it with this uh, parang. And this is what I got. I'm gonna try to kind of make a ladle out of it. This will be my bowl. And uh, this is my my whack stick. A whacker. Clean it up a bit. Is there a way to stop a rolling stone? This old highway just goes on and on. In my younger days, I heard it call my name. But lately every mile just stands the same Faded memories and broken dreams Are all I have to show From years traveling a rocky lonely road If there was a way to stop a rolling stone I let it slip away a long, long time ago This rambling fever cost me a home For every freedom, something else is gone. Now my rambling shoes are tattered and torn. From chasing a dream on a highway that's my From years traveling a rocky, lonely road If there was a way to stop a rolling stone I let it slip away a long, long time ago I let it slip away a long, long time ago. See how smooth this uh, full flat grind? This is a wee whittler. And uh, this is a new design has a uh, high saber or a high scandy with a micro bevel 
Now, I wanted to try, the reason I'm doing this is, besides just look, enjoying whittling, is I wanted to see the difference in carving between these two different knives. And it is really night and day. It really is. They, I have a whole lot more control with the full flap than I do this uh, Scandi um, with a micro bevel. And it just it just wants to to take too much wood off. I don't have as much control over it as I do this knife. This knife I can get the angles a little bit better and I can control the cuts. And, you know, I said in the other video that, that it could be experience, but it, it's, it's really not. It's, it's the, the blade shape. It's the way the blade wants to cut. Now, is there ways to overcome that? I don't think so. I, I, I really don't. But I guess it all depends on the, on the user. Because I can control this so much easier. And I just get so much of a better cut. For the full flat. The points are almost... Well, not quite the same. One's more of a little drop point. This is more of a uh, of a, a clip point, I guess you could call it. Even though I've used this knife for probably the better part of a week now every day I still I'm still a partial to my full flats I have to be honest with you now on the heavy use knives like batoning and can uh, camp chores and things like that, that that requires a little bit of an abuse then of course, I think the uh, the saber grind is probably king on that part, but that's my opinion. Others may gravitate toward a convex. I'm just not really a Scandi guy. I, I don't I don't like the grind. It just doesn't doesn't suit me and my needs. Now that's a fairly decent rough and ready label. I mean it's not as intricate as a lot of these slawed carvers that's been doing it for ages and ages and ages. Has a lot more talent than I got. But it certainly is useful. And it also gives me the opportunity to, to not only try out these two different knives right here, but also a new toy. I so saw Dave Canterbury use this in a video here a few weeks ago. And so I got me one. It is the Baco cabinet scraper and I got it from his his um, store the Pathfinder store um, can't remember what the name of the store is survival resources or something like that um, and I reshaped it it comes as a, as a rectangle 
and so I put some curves on it and uh, so that I can use it to to suit my needs and basically take it over here Yep, so far I'm not sold on this candy, folks. That one I remember. But I got it, that little small one, so I can get in there and get these spoons scraped out. Smooth out. See how much smoother that is. I don't know if you can see that on camera or not, but it is making short work of that. That thing. I mean, you got to go the right direction with the grain, but that's with anything carving. And I got these shoulders here to not only do handles around the handles, but you can also round the corners here. And uh, smooth those corners out. And basically, all this does is save the spine of your knife. And two, your spine is tendedly, tendedly straight. Whereas here, these you can you can create these corners and uh, these uh, rounded places here you can smooth those out Let's see how that works well I'll tell you what it does a good job I'm really surprised at how well it does work The problem is with these spoons and stuff, I just never know when to quit whittling. I just enjoy the whittling part. <laughs> I just never know when to quit. That was the tools that was used. So I appreciate you guys joining me on this little tidbit and with this carving this little ladle out of sweet gum, very green sweet gum. And uh, once this thing dries a little bit, then I'll finish finish it up, polishing it up, put some oil on it. And, We'll use it in canning or in a pot of beans or something. So until the next one, you guys get out in the woods. Play around with this. Just carve anything. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything. Just whittle on a stick. If you do, take plenty of band-aids and lots of knives. We'll catch you again soon.